Oregon. And seeing as I have now read Mansfield Park for the second time, I wanted to kind of talk about some of the things that I really appreciated more the second time around that I might not have paid attention to the first time. So one thing that I noticed I think was really well done was a lot of, there was some foreshadowing in the beginning of the book that I didn't necessarily pick up on the first time I read. Like there's a part towards the beginning where, where when um, Sir Thomas and Mrs. Norris are talking about wanting to bring Fanny to, Mans to Mansfield Park, um, I like to say with Mrs. Norris, whatever it is they're saying at the beginning of the book, where they're talking about her potentially marrying one of the kids. And it's like, you know, that actually comes to fruition at the end of the book, which is quite interesting. And as well, like the bickering of Miss of Mrs. Norris and Sir Thomas, I think is interesting because it shows like their dynamic is such where it's, where it's like eventually they do end up having a rift and their bickering ends up like with the two characters separating from each other's company. Um, another thing that I will no like notice on is Mariah, it, like the second time around reading, knowing what I know about her, it's like, okay, she definitely, there are times when it's like her flirtations might not be necessarily noticeable to a modern audience because like there were different expectations of what is or isn't polite behavior and, and previous uh, places and cultures than we necessarily have now. But it's like she definitely was, we see that she and Mr. Crawford, like they, they are obviously like they have an attachment to each other of some sort. And I'm also noticing that Mariah was like a lot more, she's one of those selfish, like, what's the word? She's like, like, I would almost describe her as like a mean girl where she's like, she wants to be superior to everyone else. She wants other people to look up to her. And like, she's kind of, there are times when it's like, she's kind of like put, like, it seems like she gains um, self-fulfillment from putting people like Fanny down. And, uh, and it's like, it, it's more, it was more noticeable to me the second time reading it. And things like Fanny being like her as like, when, like, when she offers to help Mr. Rushworth, like, um, during the play, help him memorize his lines, it's like, we really get to see, like, how much goodness of character she has. Like, she's, extremely patient and I, I noticed more this time around like instead of because the first time I read it I was I was like why doesn't she want to be in this play and um more of that is now I know that lover's vows was kind of like the plot line of it is something where it's kind of scandalous whereas to us it's like we wouldn't necessarily know that context at least until like um like the first time reading through um and so, like, I see a lot more of her patience coming through because I'm not so preoccupied. I mean, like, why doesn't she want to do this? Um, and she, she has a lot of patience and, like, she, she also, it kind of feels at times, like, she's kind of being, like, emotionally abused. Like, Mrs., like, Aunt Norris, it's like, She's, there are times where she's just downright, downright, like, really hostile, and she's in a position of power over Fanny, um, and there are times when it's, like, she knows that Fanny's, like, always, do like, always doting and always doing everything, like, as soon as she's asked. Like, we see that throughout, that Fanny's actions are such, where she's always being helpful, she's always putting things down at a moment's notice to go help either of her aunts, so when I see Mrs. Norris, like, downright saying oh fanny like you, you could have done this so easily it's like if fanny fanny would choose to do those things so naturally so when she's so when mrs norris is saying these things it's like it kind of feels like she's just purposefully trying to hurt fanny like these aren't like genuinely like good desires it seems like she just wants to control fanny or belittle fanny or hurt fanny or make fanny feel obligated to her in some way so it's like, it feels like Mrs. Norris is kind of like abusive emotionally towards Fanny. Like she's just really not a good, like she's not a good adult role model for her. She's not um, caring to her. It kind of feels like she thinks of her as like, 
like, I don't know, like, I guess in a sense, like a stepchild, but some, someone who's like, she wants power over, but who is somehow like higher, in a sense, Fanny's higher status than a servant. But on the other hand, it's like, she's treated less well than like the housekeeper and that, at, um, Mr. Rushworth's house when they go to, I think it's Southerton. And she, she said, Mrs. Norris is saying all these good things about the housekeeper and her cheese. And it's like, in a sense, Fanny's treated worse than the housekeeper. So, <sighs> and other things that I, I noticed or paid attention to this time around are like, Mr. Crawford's a lot creepier <laughs> because as like, as a teenager, it's like, you don't necessarily realize just how creepy a guy not accepting no for no is when you, but when you're like older, it's like, he is freaking creepy. Like, poor Fanny, poor, poor Fanny. I am sorry she ever had to put up with Mr. Crawford. He is like, he is awful <laughs> in my humble opinion. And um, other details that I noticed would be at Fanny's house at Portsmouth, like the way that the, the basically the house being in disarray, the way that the servants aren't taking care of things, like those two, I think like a, an, an earlier audience, someone from the Regency or Victoria, or later Victorian period, like how well a house was kept up was considered to be like a reflection of, of a woman and like her ability to run a house and keep it in good order was supposedly like a reflection on her. And so that kind of like would have been something I think that to a reader in previous times might have been taken as like a reflection on and like a reflection of like lack of ability to be like responsible and stuff whereas today I think we mostly just see this as like a marker of like like oh those those poor things like look at how much this poverty is bringing on her whereas it's like I think in that time period like the ability to run a house was kind of a woman's full-time job essentially um yeah and like other things that are like strange to me reading like <laughs> like reading back would be things like um yeah, Susan like Susan like the way that we see that um Fanny's mom has like I see clear favoritism in her this time around like it's clear to me that like she obviously doesn't care very much about like Fanny and Susan and things like the traveling library that it's like Fanny had to pay when she was securing books for Susan and her, like she's putting down money to be able to rent those books. So I kind of realized this time around that it's like, wow, literature really wasn't accessible to the to people who aren't financially well off. Like Fanny's having to pay money to just rent books, which is kind of can be kind of like shocking because now like nowadays at least in my country there are frequently public libraries where you can rent books for free for self-improvement so yeah and I also like the ending this time around feels a little bit more like fulfilling because I like like I think a lot like me and I think a lot of people also like we want pretty happy endings like really long drawn out like the, the, since the characters have been working up so long to get together, we want our happy, lovey-dovey romance ending. And so it, it, just, it kind of felt like originally like a letdown to me, like Edmund and Fanny getting together is so short, so concise. But I feel like now that this, this story isn't primarily like a romance story, I felt almost like kind of in a sense like it's kind of a morality tale um as well as like it's a story mostly about like a family about like the title of it is Mansfield Park and that's the location that the family lives in it's centered around this this Mansfield Park this home of this family so I feel like in a sense it's a morality play like kind of like a morality play a morality story as well as like a story about domestic life like a a story like about what a beautiful domestic life can be like and so I feel now that this like it not having a beautiful lovey-dovey 
big romance scene in the end kind of feels like okay if I don't think of this as a romance novel then I can accept that a little bit more so yeah I also still think that this is really interesting for learning about like I would say like what societal expectations were at this time period as well as like what some of the realities were for for different people and something else that I did pick up on is even though like Fanny's Fanny Price's fa like family Mr. and Mrs. Price that even though we think of them as quite poor they're employing a servant so that would put them as like I think that would put them as at least middle class just a, a poorly run middle class like household is how I would place them if you're employing a servant if, below you like that that doesn't make you like in that time period I don't think of them as being like poor poor they're still within them like they're still within the middle class so I do think it's interesting the way that like class in this novel is like <sighs> because we don't really see much from the people who are truly poor. We think of Fanny as being quite poor, but I think that she's slightly better off than we might immediately think of her as. Um, so yeah, I felt like this was a really good read, and thank you for tuning in and listening to me read this book. Have a great day.